Welcome to this video on boundary layers. This is just an introductory video, just to give you an idea of what a boundary layer is. Uh, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the screen. And you see a picture here of a sphere that there's some flow going past it from top to bottom here, so the flow's in that direction. And some smoke has been introduced so that you can clearly see the, the boundary layer. So the sphere, of course, the top part is shown pretty well, but you can sort of see the bottom part right here. Right, so when the smoke goes over the sphere, it's a nice smooth flow over the top part, kind of follows the contour of the sphere, but then you see that it no longer follows the contour about halfway across, halfway down the sphere. It separates from the surface of the sphere, and we call this boundary layer separation. We'll talk about this in another lecture a little bit later. And then behind it, you get the formation of what's known as a wake. This region is a wake region, and the flow is kind of complicated in that region. So our discussion over the next couple of lectures is really going to focus on this idea of a boundary layer, a thin layer of fluid adjacent to the surface uh, over which it's flowing, and just the properties of that boundary layer and, and um, how that affects the drag forces on an object. So that's going to be what our focus is over the next couple of lectures. Let me just go ahead and show a schematic so we can talk about the structure of a boundary layer a little more, in a little more detail. First, let me give you a little bit of history about boundary layers. The concept of a boundary layer is actually pretty recent in terms of um, you know, the history of fluid mechanics. A lot of fluid mechanics was developed back in the 1700s and 1800s, but the concept of a boundary layer really occurred in the early 1900s. Uh, there was a researcher named Ludwig Prandtl. He's a big, a famous guy in fluid mechanics and heat transfer. And he had the idea that a lot of the viscous stresses most of the viscous stresses in a fluid flow actually occurred in a thin layer next to the surface of an object, and he called that a boundary layer. Um, prior to that, people really didn't understand um, how the viscous stresses were generated in a flow field, um, at least not in a, a good analytical, method, uh, analytical way. So, so Prandtl actually developed the idea, and then he went ahead and uh, wrote down the Navier-Stokes equations. They existed at that time and simplified them to a form that are known as the boundary layer equations. So the boundary layer equations are simplified Navier-Stokes equations. And then uh, some of Prandtl's graduate students actually d solved various case, uh, well, at least one case of the uh, boundary layer equations that we use for laminar boundary uh, flow. And we call those, the, we call that the Blasius solution for a laminar boundary layer. And that's a topic that we're gonna actually cover in a couple of lectures, or a couple of videos at least. So anyway, it was uh, Prandtl who came up with this idea of a boundary layer, and it's relatively recent. So let's go ahead and look at the screen, and you see flow going from left to right over this kind of elliptical shape, and I wanted to just show different parts of the flow field. You'll see this kind of dashed line right here. Let me highlight it in yellow. This kind of dashed line, that is what we call uh, kind of the boundary layer region. So outside of that region, we have a region known as an outer potential flow. You don't have to worry about the names of this too much. Uh, but this outer flow, uh, there's some terms here that you're not familiar with. It's, it's irrotational. That just don't worry about what that means. It's not, a not something that we cover in this course. The, the part that's really important for this course is that it's negligible viscous effects out, out in this outer flow. There's the stresses in the flow field, you know, the tau equals mu du dy, those stresses are negligibly small in this outer flow. So the outer flow can be considered inviscid, actually. We'll just, I'll, in a moment, I'll tell you why that is. Essentially, all of the viscous effects occur inside this dashed line, which is what we call the boundary layer region. So I'll highlight this in uh, orange. So this region in here is where all the viscous effects are concentrated. We call this the boundary layer region, and then it kind of continues downstream. This is the boundary layer region, and we have very strong viscous effects here. It occurs because we have the no-slip boundary condition uh, occurring here. So let me just kind of zoom in on part of, the, part of the boundary just to kind of explain what I'm talking about. Actually, let me do the top so that it's, so that it's a little more obvious. So what I'm going to do is just zoom in on this region down here. 
So if you zoom in closely enough, it almost looks like a flat plate here. Here's our boundary layer dashed line. So as the flow goes past the solid surface, of course we have the no-slip boundary condition occurring right at the surface, so the flow sticks there. And then we have the outer flow, which is, I'm going to just write it as U infinity here, just kind of the velocity far away. Okay. So we know that the velocity will have to go from zero out to U infinity eventually. The U infinity, by the way, again, is just, it's just the velocity way out here somewhere. Okay. And uh, so we know we have to go from a zero velocity at the surface out to that U infinity. Most of that velocity change occurs within this dashed line here. So if I sketched out the velocity profile, it would look like this. So most of the change in velocity occurs right in this region, <clears throat> pardon me, within, within this dashed line region. This is what we call the boundary layer. Now let's think about this for a moment, what that means in terms of viscous stresses. Remember that the uh, viscous stresses, let me just write it as a tau y x stress. This is the y direction. This is our u x per velocity profile. So the tau y x stress is about uh, equal to the dynamic viscosity times dux dy. Right, so that's what our velocity gradient. I'm, I'm going to neglect the plus duy dx term. It's pretty small in comparison. So remember, our viscous stresses look like this. It's related to the velocity gradient. Well, within here, the, the velocity gradient's large. Right? The, the velocity is changing um, rapidly in the y direction. Remember, this is like dux, so how the velocity changes in the x direction with respect to a change in dy. So if the velocity changes rapidly in the y direction, then you get a large velocity gradient, and then you'll have a large shear stress. So that's why you get large shear stresses in this kind of orange region in here, the, inside the boundary layer. Now, outside the boundary layer, in this outer flow out here, the dux dy is essentially zero. It, it's not very large at all. The velocity doesn't change much as you move further and further away from the boundary. So the dux dy here is basically zero, so the shear stresses are zero. So out in this outer flow, dux dy is about equal to zero, which means the shear stress tau yx is about equal to zero. So all of the shear stress effects are really concentrated inside this boundary layer region. And that boundary layer, boundary layer region can be very thin. When you have a high-speed flow, like flow past um, a 747 wing, you know, it's just over 500 miles per hour, the boundary layer thickness is on the order of maybe an inch or so. So you have a velocity change that goes from zero relative to the wing to 500 miles per hour over a scale of one inch. So you can imagine there, there's significant viscous effects in that one inch layer. But once you get a, one inch or so away from the, the wing, most of the, uh, the shear stresses outside of that are relatively small. So all of these shear stresses are really concentrated in the boundary layer. And that was the kind of the breakthrough that Prandtl uh, came up with, is he recognized that. So we have this boundary layer. And as the flow goes further downstream, what ends up happening is, you know, the boundary layer grows in thickness as you get further and further downstream. What's happening is uh, the effects of the wall are just uh, diffusing out into the rest of the flow field. They're being felt further and further away out into the flow field. So the, the boundary layer grows in thickness. And then um, at some point, you know, on the back half of this ellipse, what happens is the boundary layer no longer follows the surface of the, the ellipse. It can't, it, what, what's happening is the pressure is starting to increase on the back half of this uh, ellipse. So, and so this is what we call an adverse pressure gradient. The, the pressure that the flow is moving into is starting to increase. And so the, the little fluid particles can't follow the contour of the ellipse anymore. And then they detach uh, or separate from the surface of the ellipse. We call this boundary layer separation, and that's indicated right here. And then what happens is all of this kind of viscous effect uh, fluid propagates downstream and forms a wake region. So in the wake region, it gets very complex. It's actually pretty hard to model. The viscous effects aren't all that significant any longer down here. I should probably erase this part. So the, the viscous effects aren't as significant back here because the velocity gradients are small. But it's very kind of complicated because you get these vortices that are forming. 
we're not really going to analyze that region. What we're going to focus on is just this, uh, we're going to analyze the region leading up to boundary layer separation. After boundary layer separation, it's more complex and we're not going to analyze that. So the flow field around an object is actually quite complex. Uh, we, you know, we have this boundary layer region that forms. You can get some boundary layer separation that occurs. You get a wake region. It's much more complex than you might have first thought. One other thing I just want to highlight here is I've shown a typical streamline. Uh, let me zoom in on this. If I was uh, drawing the streamline, it would go along here, and you see it crosses the dashed line. The point I wanted to make there is that the dashed line is not a streamline. It's just the boundary, separ boundary layer separation, uh, not boundary layer separation, it's, it's the boundary layer dividing line. It's just showing where the viscous effects are significant and where they're not. Um, it is not a streamline. So I just wanted to highlight that, that the streamline actually can be in the outer flow and then, all, then go into the boundary layer region. It's, it's no, no problem. The dashed line is just separating where viscous effects are important and where they're not. All right, so I think that covers it for the introduction. Um, and then the next few lectures will be uh, focused on analyzing you know, how we describe the thickness of a boundary layer how we deal with laminar boundary layers, how we deal with turbulent boundary layers, and um, how we deal with pressure effects that cause boundary, uh, boundary layer separation, as we described moments ago. Okay, we'll go ahead and end it there.